fundamental problem F12-7 says a particle moves along a straight line such that its acceleration is A equals 4t squared minus 2 meters per second squared, where t is in seconds. When t equals 0, the particle is located 2 meters to the left of the origin, and when t equals 2 seconds, it is 20 meters to the left of the origin. Determine the position of the particle when t equals 4 seconds. Right, so in order to help visualize what's going on here, I'm just going to draw a quick sketch of this particle. So here is the origin. And then this red dot can be the particle at the first position. So this will be at T1, which is 2 meters to the left of the origin. And then further out to the left, we'll have the second position at T2 and S2, where S represents position. And of course, the particle moves at a straight line. And from the statement, we know that this particle carries an acceleration and therefore also a velocity as it moves to the left. Now I'm just going to define my S axis as positive to the right. And finally, the distance between the second position and the origin is 20 meters. And so that completes this sketch. And now I'm just going to go ahead and write our given values. So we are given the acceleration as an expression which is 4t squared minus 2 meters per second squared. And notice that this expression is in terms of time t. And next, for our initial time, we can use t equals 0. And we are given position at this initial time 0, which is going to be negative 2 meters, since the positive direction is to the right. And finally, t2 can be the 2 seconds that are given where the particle is 20 meters away from the origin to the left. So now that we have all our givens written out, we want to go ahead and determine the position of the particle when t is equal to 4 seconds. So first of all, we're given acceleration and we want to find the position from the acceleration. And so we know that acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And we also know that Velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. And so how can we use this to go from acceleration to velocity and to position? Well, in order to do this, we're going to have to integrate from acceleration to get velocity and then integrate velocity to get position. Because from calculus, we know that integration is taking the antiderivative of a derivative. So now let's go ahead and set the derivative of velocity dv by dt as equal to the acceleration we're given, which is 4t squared minus 2. And let's first multiply out the dt to the right side. That way we can isolate dv. So that'll leave us with the expression dv equals 4t squared minus 2 dt. And now let's go ahead and simply integrate this by integrating both sides. And so the integral of dv is simply v. Hence, v is equal to the integral of 4t squared minus 2 dt. And so integrating the right side, we can start off by integrating 4t squared alone. And so using the integration rule, the integral of 4t squared is simply 4t cubed. As we're adding 1 to 2 and then dividing by that 3. So I'll go ahead and write it down here, 4t cubed over 3. And then we have minus the integral of 2, which is simply 2t. And then remember that since this isn't a definite integral, we need to add our constant c1. And so now that we have an expression for the velocity of the particle, we can now go ahead and integrate this velocity in order to obtain an expression for the position s. So integrating this velocity for position s, again, remember that since the derivative of position is velocity, the integral of velocity is essentially equal to the derivative of ds by dt. So here I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite uh, v as ds by dt. 
which is equal to the same expression 4t cubed over 3 minus 2t plus c1. And now again, we want to multiply dt to the right side. That way we can integrate for ds. So that'll leave us with the integral of ds is equal to the integral of the right side. And so the integral of ds is simply s. And now integrating the right side, we can start off by integrating 4t cubed over 3, which is 4t to the power of 4 over 12, which of course can be simplified to 1t to the power of 4 over 3. So I'll go ahead and write this down as simply t to the power of 4 over 3, and then minus the integral of 2t, which is simply 2t squared over 2, which we can simplify as t squared. And then this will be plus the integral of c1, which is c1 times t, and then plus another constant, c2. So as you can see, we now have an expression for the position of the particle which is of course in terms of time t. And now what we need to do here is substitute our known values of t and the s in order to solve for the constants c1 and c2. So here we can consider these values as our initial conditions and our boundary conditions. So for example, we can first take our initial conditions. So subbing in s1, we have the negative two meters is equal to subbing in t1, which is zero, which will be zero to the power of four over three minus zero squared plus c1 times zero plus c2, which again are our initial conditions where t1 is zero and s1 is negative two meters. And now simplifying down this equation, all of this goes to zero. And so we're simply left with c2 equals negative two meters. So as you can see, we have used our initial conditions to solve for our second constant, C2. So the next thing we want to do is plug in C2 in order to find C1. And again, remember here, we're just trying to find our two constants. That way we can solve for the final position of the particle. So now here I'll be subbing in the boundary conditions, which are defined by the second position of the particle. So T2 equals two seconds and S2 equals negative 20 meters. So plugging this in into our position equation, we have negative 20 meters equals two to the power of four over three minus two squared plus C1 times two plus negative two, which is C2. So this reduces to negative 20 equals C1 or two C1 minus 0 0.667. So adding the 0.667 to the left, we have negative 19.33 equals 2c1. And now simply dividing the 2 to the left, we will finally have c1 equals roughly negative 9.67. And so just to recap, remember that we used our initial conditions to solve for c2 and then our boundary conditions, which was the second position to solve for C1. And now that we know both constants, we can finally solve for the position of the particle when T is equal to four seconds. And again, just to visualize this, I'll go ahead and try to roughly sketch this final position of the particle where we can use T3 equals four seconds. And we're trying to find S. So we're trying to find the position at T equals four seconds. So here I'll go ahead and write down the equation to solve for S, which we can also say is S3. And here we're just going to plug in four seconds for T. So we'll have S equals four to the power of four divided by three minus four squared plus C2, which is negative 9.67 times four plus C1, which was negative two. And so now we can simply solve this equation, which will give us the final position of the particle. And so plugging in the numbers on the right side into a calculator, we'll have S is equal to roughly 28.67 meters.